Hi, welcome to SPR Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. This is our daily NBA pick show we've been doing with Joe Duffy from OffshoreInsiders.com. Today is Tuesday, March 3rd. Joe Duffy, thanks for being back with us. Well, thank you for having me, Mr. Loshak. All right, Joe. I went one and one yesterday. You know, not so happy about that. And uh, you took a loss, Joe Duffy. You know, I know these are your lower tier picks every day. Your top picks, of course, always go at your website, OffshoreInsiders.com. But people just, you know, that doesn't matter to them. They want free picks. They want winners with the free picks anyway, right? I don't blame them. Yes, they deserve they deserve the uh, the free winners, and then they'll certainly upgrade to the best premium picks in the industry at Offshore exactly. Insiders. So hopefully we can I, give them some today. Before we get to that, just quickly tell people what your website is all about, OffshoreInsiders.com. That's where your top picks do go every day, right? You got it. Five winners for tonight, including a system that those people who first bought from me back in 1988 on the score phones, they probably got a good idea what it was, but this system literally goes back to the 1980s, arguably the greatest system in sports, applies tonight among five. Five winners at OffshoreInsiders.com. Wow, arguably the greatest system in sports applies tonight. Do you, can you tell us so oh, just which game it applies to? Uh, I won't say that, but I will say way back in the day, there was some software that was written by uh, Dr. Mike Orkin. A prof you can Google him, a very prominent statistics professor, and we found this system on some software that he doesn't make anymore, but we've discovered it, and I put it on some other software that's out there, and this thing has held up for a long, long time. All right, that sounds great, Joe Duffy. Well, there's one game that's standing out to me as a little bit head-scratching. Maybe you can comment on it. It's uh, Sacramento, New York, right? Right now, New York is, yeah. uh, the Knicks are a four-point home underdog. Total's 200 and a half or 201, and um, the total has gone up, which is what I would have expected. It was like 199 earlier today, and uh, uh, the, the Sacramento favorite line has also gone up, which surprises me a little bit. I'm leaning towards the Knicks plus four and uh, and the over. You know, the, uh, the Knicks are, the Knicks have actually covered two in a row they're playing kind of well and uh, Sacramento still finding their legs even though they've got uh, you know uh, the new coach uh, should they really be a road favorite here of four points I don't know and Sacramento of course plays a higher uh, a speedier brand of basketball with Carl as the coach so uh, they've gone over in five of their last six the Knicks have even gone over in three in a row although one of those need a little OT help but in general I'm thinking the Knicks plus four and the over might both be great bets and I'm not exactly sure why the lines are where they are can you shed a little light on this Joe Duffy yeah that line keeps going up maybe somebody truly has inside information because DeMarcus Cousins is supposed to be doubtful he was right. uh, listed as questionable to doubtful this morning and then all all reports are telling me that he is not going to play in Sacramento is three and ten against the spread without him remember he averages 23.7 points per game 12.2 rebounds also Darren Collison is out so uh, they're going to be pretty much shorthanded now I, I will admit that I'm a little surprised that the Knicks have actually not done better with uh, out Carmelo Anthony I did say that I really felt the Knicks would benefit at least spread wise from the so called Ewing theory uh, that where a team loses their overrated star and they're actually undervalued now the Knicks are starting to cover I believe they have covered two straight but they're still overall four seven and one minus Melo Anthony but I do think that you know Melo Anthony is overrated the fact they don't have a means the Knicks are going to be overvalued and unless there is truly some inside information that Sacramento is going to have those two key cogs back tonight I'm going to have to agree with you there yeah I mean the Knicks have actually played kind of well recently with Hardaway Jr. and uh, you know a few other guys playing well and it just doesn't make any sense that Sacramento would be you know a road favorite here of like one and a half or two and then take that much of a move up to four right I mean Sacramento is still Sacramento right it's very possible some people out there are chasing steam and maybe you know even assuming that someone does uh, and I don't really think there's a lot of inside information mm -hmm. out there I mean we definitely have information that you have to search hard for and whatnot but yeah unless there's somebody out there they truly know that DeMarcus Cousins is very likely to play and that he and Collison are both, both going to be in the lineup that seems to be kind of crazy and as yeah. I said the Knicks are seem to be finding their feet without that overrated uh, Anthony. And then I was also thinking about maybe the over in the Lakers and Charlotte you know the Lakers five straight overs they've kind of uh, they've got kind of a deep uh, lineup right now and uh, and they're scoring a lot five straight overs and Charlotte has been a strong undertrender recently uh, in the long term but they have gone over in three out of their last four scoring a bit better lately not a high total it was 192 on the overnight now it's 192 and a half so it's you know, creeping up a little bit, but um, I'm thinking about the over in that one. Do you have any opinions on that? Uh, Charlotte is going under 10 and three without Kemba Walker, and Charlotte they have the second worst offensive efficiency in the entire NBA 
over the last 15 games, only getting 95.2 points per 100 possessions. Now, the theory being with Walker out of the lineup for a while, they should be making adjustments, which would kind of support what you're saying. But I don't know. All in all, I, I have a tough time as bad as Charlotte has been offensively over the last 15 games to be betting their game to go over the totals. So not enough to go against you, but I can't really agree with you too much. Right. All right. And then I was thinking about, you know, under in Milwaukee, Denver. Uh, we know that Denver just fired Coach Shaw, so I'm not exactly sure how that might impact scoring this game. But Denver has gone under in four straight games. We know Milwaukee is always, uh, you know, a good team to look at when you're thinking about the under. The total is not that low. It's a little bit low, but considering Milwaukee's playing 193, what do you think about that? Maybe an under with Milwaukee, Denver. Yeah, I don't really have a very strong play really on either the over under. I can tell you we definitely like the side at offshoreinsiders.com but as far as the total I have no reason to uh, talk you out but uh, I don't really have any strong indicators for either the over or the under all right well, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do uh, with my picks tonight let's hear what you have to say what do you have for us for a free pick uh, from tonight's card Joe as far as the the free pick is concerned the Bulls they're four and ten overall without Derek Rose of course he's missed quite a few games this year and he's now out for the year but as I said his injury I think was more def uh, deflating than most injuries because with when Rose was in the lineup, the Bulls were a legitimate dark horse championship contender. You felt that maybe by the time the playoffs came around, he would be close to being 100%, but I think that really took a lot of the wind out of their sail. Also, Jimmy Butler, one of the more underrated players in the NBA, is going to be out. He is the second most efficient shooting guard in the NBA, according to the Hollinger ratings, and those are pretty good as far as trying to measure a player's absence or a return to the lineup. Uh, so I'm going to go with uh, Washington as the free pick. All right. Yeah, that's what I was I was thinking about myself, just wondering if, uh, you know, maybe the replacements for all those guys who are banged up uh, and out for Chicago are going to be as good or maybe even hungrier than the, the guys are replacing. Yeah, and, and not only that, but teams are 62 and uh, 116 as, a, as an underdog with two or more days of rest after a win in which they're off of a game which they scored at least 10 points more in the first quarter than they did in the first in the fourth quarter which says you know maybe they've got some tired legs and that would say to fade Chicago but yeah no the Bulls they're just without too many weapons I think and you know as I said I think it's really deflating where they've gone from I think a legitimate championship contender to a team that really has no possibility whatsoever of uh, contending for the NBA title. All right well right now Pick'em is one of the widely available lines we can give you that one Joe Duffy so just one free pick uh, for our show tonight Washington Pick'em. Yeah th that would be my one pick but I'll tell you what just just for the heck of it why don't we you know with that line move I'll agree with you. Why don't we throw in the New York Knicks as well? Really? You're going to take the Knicks plus four? I be, because when I see something like that, I'm like, that line move didn't happen for no reason. I mean, there's a reason yeah. that that line moved like that. It's, I don't think it's overwhelming public action. It's got to be sharp action, right? I will definitely, after this, to get the, uh, before I make a decision, maybe making a last minute bet, I'm going to check all my sources and make sure that Sacramento, that Cousins isn't actually going to play and that they're going to get, you know, all of a sudden uh, Cousins and Collison back in the lineup because it does seem like a little bit of a weird move and maybe the Sharps are disagreeing with me as far as uh, Carmelo Anthony being overrated. But I do think the fact that the Knicks are starting to play a little bit better spread-wise without him, I wouldn't be surprised if they go on a winning streak. So I think the Sharps and, and just about all gamblers, they're going to be looking at that starting lineup that's posted for the Sacramento Kings tonight to see if there's something that maybe – some betters do know that the rest of the world does not know. So you're going to take Washington Pick'em, and you are going to include officially yeah. for the purposes of our, of our record keeping in these videos the Knicks plus four? You got it. All right, Joe Duffy. Well, I will take the over in that one. That's how I was leaning. The, the number is right now 200 and a half or 201 are the market-wide numbers. So I'll take over 200 and a half. Uh, you know, maybe if there is some, even if there's not inside information, uh, you know, the, I would still like the over anyway, just because of the pace that Sacramento plays and because of how the Knicks have been playing offensively recently. So I'll take the over in that one, 200 and a half. And should I make that the only one, or should I go with Charlotte and the Lakers? Um... All right, I guess I'll pass on that one. I'll just make one pick over 200 and a half on Sacramento and the Knicks. Joe Duffy taking the Knicks plus four and Washington pick them. Great call, Joe, as always. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.